Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Hey, let's build a calculator. This is something that lots of people have asked me how to do over the last couple of years. And I've done like little lessons here and there in my expert and developer courses, how to build a calculator. But I figured this would make a perfect series for the Tech Help video. So over the next couple or several or dozens of videos, depending on how popular it is, we're gonna make ourselves a calculator. Now you might be saying to yourself, self, I don't need a calculator because I got the built-in Windows calculator that's pretty good. It does all the basic stuff that I need and, and more. Yeah, that's true, but this is more of a programming example, right? This is more of a let's teach you some cool stuff with VB kind of thing. So uh, if you have no desire to build a calculator or to learn some cool nifty funky tricks, then then stop watching. But we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna build a calculator, and we're gonna maybe teach a couple things you didn't know. Most importantly, we're gonna have a good time doing it. So let's see what we gotta do here. Now, this is a developer level class, but I'm gonna start with the basics. I'm not gonna assume you know anything other than the simplest of the simple VBA. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, don't worry, it's not hard. Go watch this video first, my intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started. And that's the minimum of what I'm gonna assume you know before going into the rest of the calculator project, okay? If there's anything more advanced than that, I'll talk about it while we're going along. Now we're gonna start with the basics, just a little simple stuff here, adding numbers together and multiplying and dividing and all that cool stuff. And I actually posted a couple days ago that I'm gonna be building this calculator and lots of guys on the website posted lots of different information, some ideas. Not gonna get this crazy, Kevin, settle down. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know, eventually. But there's lots of different stuff here that they gave me some ideas. So I built it a little bit more complicated than I was planning on doing. And here's my finished product that I got so far, and it's pretty cool. You could do 56 times three equals whatever. You can memory plus it. You can get the sign of that. You can clear it. You can take a number and square it. You can do those. You can do this. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. So. I'm gonna teach you how to do all of the things that I did right here over the next several videos. But let's start from the beginning and take it from there. So the beginning for me is I'm gonna use my Tech Help Free template, but only because I don't feel like starting a blank new database from scratch. Um, I'm gonna take everything out of this database though, pretty much. I'm gonna delete all the objects except for that main menu. So delete, yep, goodbye. Yep, see ya. Delete all this stuff. We don't need any of this stuff. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay. Because this guy's pretty much already almost formatted to what I need. So right-click, design view. And if you don't have a copy of this template, you can go grab a copy if you want off my website. It's a free download. I'll put a link down below. And I'm going to change this to say calculator. Right here, calculator. You can change the name of it if you want to. Calc label, that doesn't matter. We're not gonna refer to it. The only time I ever worry about what that name is is if I'm gonna refer to it later. Like if I'm gonna change the background, say, you know, calc label dot back color equals red or something like that. But meh, no. All right, this bar up here, this box up here is going to be for our values that we get. So we'll put you up here. And presentation is gonna be important with this. So we're gonna make it look pretty. All right, now this guy right now is current date. We're gonna change this to just calc. That's the name of the text box is calc. I'm gonna get rid of the control source and the format, so it's just a number. And I think what are we gonna do? Like uh, like a bigger, let's do like 20 point. Yeah, it looks good. 20 points, fine. And let's write justify it, because pretty much every calculator I've ever seen, it's right aligned. You can make it centered. You can do whatever you want. It's your calculator. Build it however you want to build it. Now my sample demo one that I did, I made mine purple. I made mine purple, but I'm gonna do the other one differently. I'm gonna put both of these up for the members to download, by the way, because I got some little nifty changes in mind that I might not incorporate into this one. But let's make this background one dark blue. How's that? That looks good. Okay. Let's make our caption. It's not the tech help free template anymore, is it? It's the access learning zone calculator. All right. We'll take this out of here for now. We don't need that, we don't need these, we just need one button to play with. And let's get rid of all of the VBA code that might be in here already. Now I put a button up here on my quick launch toolbar to view code, that just opens up the code editor. But if you can't find that for any whatever reason, just go up here, go into events, and just pick any, if you, if you see any event in here, just click on that and go to builder button. 
and it'll bring you right in here. And we don't need any of this stuff, including my status label. Just delete everything. Except for, don't, don't take my copyright notice out, obviously. But, <laughs> but you want to leave option compare database and option explicit up there. Okay, and I've talked about what these are in previous videos. Option compare database is just a way of compare, doing string comparisons. So, for example, uh, Richard, all caps, and Richard, all lowercase, are technically the same thing. You can change that to binary. There's other methods if you want to, you know, change the way that you're comparing. If you want to make sure you, you know, two strings that are different cases are different, then you can change that value. You can also do it with functions. An option explicit is important because it requires and it forces you to explicitly declare your variables. And we want that because the number one reason why people have errors they can't figure out with their programming is because they typed a variable name wrong. They think it's a field name something and access is just, it just it'll just assign a new value to it. It doesn't care. So you might want to make sure you have that, which forces the compiler to say, um, uh, I don't know what that value is. So leave it there. Okay. So now we've got all the code erased out of there. We can close that guy for now. Oh, and I will do my best to put links to any other videos I have that mention topics that I talk about in this one down below in the links section. So I got a video for the option explicit, for example, go watch that if you want to learn more about it. All right, next up, actually, this is kind of bothering me. I want that to be a little bit lighter blue. Let's go to more colors. We're going to go to, well, let's go right here and we'll slide this up. Just a little. It's a little bit too dark. That's a little bit better. Okay, I like that better. All right. Now, let's make our number buttons. I'm going to take one button, make it the shape and size that you want. So right about like there. All right, change the caption. We'll put a one in there, for example. Change the font. Make it look good now because it's easier to do it now than to change them all later. Let's go 24 point. That's about right. Maybe bold. Okay, that looks good for our number one. Okay. Uh, they usually go backwards from a phone, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. Okay, let's come over here. And this guy is going to be BTN1. Now, unfortunately, for those of you who might be familiar with uh, like Visual Basic, the actual Visual Basic, not VBA, you can do something called a control array like this. Make that button one, and then all the button buttons will be in the same array. But unfortunately, access doesn't work like that. So we're going to go with just button one like that, BTN1. All right, now we're going to copy this guy. I'm going to copy it, copy Control C and then paste it twice. Paste, paste, Control V, Control V. Why just those couple? Well, you'll see why in a minute. Slide these over here. All right, we're gonna make this one button two and then button three and then don't forget to change their names. All right, BTN two and then BTN three. All right, now we're gonna copy that. Copy, paste, paste a couple more times, right? Now we'll move these ones up here like this. And then we'll slide these ones up here like that, right there. Okay, this will be four, five, and six. And seven, eight, and nine. And don't forget to change these things over here, right? Button four. And if you want to, you can just go BTN and then like copy that into the clipboard. It makes it easier for you. Click on five, then you just go like this. Paste five, six, right? Paste six. Paste seven, paste eight. And yes, I normally in older videos, I would ed edit this part out and not make you watch all this stuff. But then people complain that I edited it out. What'd you do? So I leave it in now. I don't care. <laughs> all right. And don't forget, of course, our zero down here. Okay. Make it look like just like a, a numeric keypad. All right. And this will be BTN zero. All right, save it, control S, give it a good save. All right, I'm gonna close it and open it back up. Again, I got a button on my menu bar up here that opens the main menu. You'll find it right there, of course. I like to use this little button here. And oh, it says Tech Hub Free Template cannot run the macro that calls open main menu. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have deleted that one macro. So if you realize that you've accidentally deleted something that you need, go back to your backup and grab it from your backup and put it in there. But since a lot of you might, might have missed that lesson, let me show you how I made that macro real quick. It's real simple. Create and then macro. And all this macro is going to do is open form. What form is it going to open? Main menu F. Okay. Save that as open main menu. Okay. And now that button is right there. And this guy is on the quick launch toolbar. 
All right, go to more commands, quick access toolbar, and you can add macros over here. And that's the open main menu macro right there. So you just come down with here, drop this down, pick macros, and there's my open main menu macro. You just slide it over here. So any other things you want on your quick launch toolbar, that's how you do it. And if you want a button up here on your tool, on your quick launch toolbar to open any form, just make a macro for it and then drop it up top there. That's how I did that. Everyone always asks me that. I always forward them back to the video where I cover how to do that. <laughs> okay. And no, I didn't intend on recovering that. It just happened. All right. But now we got this cool form. We got this bar here where the numbers are going to go. We got these buttons, but I click on them and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, because we didn't make the buttons do anything yet, did we? All right. So normally, if I click on a button, let's say this button one, the code that runs that is if I right click and go to build event, okay, then I can put some code in here for button one click. Let me get rid of this extra spacing here. All right. Button one click. And what do I want to say in here? Well, I don't want, I want to take whatever's in that calc box, right? Calc is the name of this box over here. And I want to add a one to it. All right. So I'm going to say calc equals calc and a one. It says treat it as a text string because if the user is going to be clicking on one, two, three, right? That's the numbers. He wants the number 123. So you're going to use string concatenation. We're going to treat this calc box like a text string, like a text box until we're actually ready to evaluate what's in there. All right. And if you don't know about string concatenation, go watch this video. All right. So save that. Come back out here. Let me close and reopen my form. Now, if I click the button one, look at that. I get one, 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 one. We could do one and zero and make a binary calculator. Actually, that'd be pretty fun to do, make binary. But that's not very helpful for what we want. We want each button to be able to put a number up there, right? Okay, now I can make an event for two. I can make an event for three. I can make an event for four. But that's a lot of work with basically the same code. So wouldn't it be nice if I could make my own function out here where I can say, all right, instead of doing that every time, I want to say add to calculator, right? And then in this case, the number one. Okay, that'd be pretty handy, right? So I'm going to make my own function up here. All right, so it's going to be a private function. Private means only this form can use it. Other forms can't use it. They won't even see it. Add to calc. And I'm going to send into it a string of some kind. So S as a string. Okay, now what is, what is this guy going to do? It's basically going to do what the other, what the button was going to do, but just instead of adding a one, add S, whatever I send to it, right? So calc equals calc and s see that so down here button one is clicked and it says add to calc add a one so one comes up into here right and then calc equals calc plus in this case one all right save it if you want to learn more about creating your own function i've got a whole video on that where we make a function to convert celsius to fahrenheit for example okay go watch that one so now if I come out here, I push the one button, the same thing happens. It doesn't look any different to the user, but you know, behind the scenes, you've got this going on, right? Ooh, ah. now if I'm going to make my next button, let's make button two, right click build event. I can just come in here and say, add to calc two, All right? Save it, close it, close it, open it. One, two, one, two, pretty straight, pretty straight. <laughs> All right, see that? Now you could make a an event for each button. Okay, but that's a lot of code in here. And it's, it, yeah, it's it, there's got to be an easier way, right? Yeah, there is. Check this out. Now there's a reason why I made this a function because normally the, the more advanced users of you out there might be thinking that didn't need to be a function. That could have been a subroutine, right? Because a subroutine just does stuff. Right, there's two kinds of procedures. There's subroutines and there's functions. Subroutines just say, hey, go do this stuff. Functions usually return a value out here. Okay, but functions can also handle events for you like this. Watch this. Delete this stuff out here. Okay, and this only works with functions, by the way. Only works with functions. All right, now we've got add to calc and let's send it the numbers. But instead of using event procedures, we're going to put the code right in here. All right, go to event, get rid of this event procedure. All right, and then come in here and say equals add to calc, and then in parentheses, a one, like a string like that. I'll zoom in so you can see better. 
equals add to calc one. Copy that to your clipboard. Okay, add to calc one, and then come over here, same thing, paste it in, add to calc two. And while we're at it, let's do three. Paste, add to calc. Ah, delete, paste. I double clicked by it. If you double click in here, it sometimes switches over to event procedure. All right, add to calc three. All right, so we got one, two, and three done. Ready? Save it, close it, go back to open the form up. Ready? One, two, three. Look at that. See how easy that was? And no extraneous code in here. That's all handled in the button. That's called an event handler function or a control event function. There's a bunch of names for it. I've seen a bunch of people call them different things. That's what I call it. <laughs> it's a function that you put in an event. Okay, and it's got to be a function. All right, now here's something neat you can do. Watch this. Copy this to the clipboard. Okay, you've already got one, two, and three in there. So we're going to select seven, eight, nine, four, five, and six, and then hold the shift key down and pick zero. That gets just those ones selected. Now come over here to on click, right? Paste that in there, hit tab or enter, and now that goes into all of these buttons. Look at that, see? Okay, and what you could do is, you could now go through and change that from one, two, three, right, four, whatever, okay? So we just change this one to four, right? Change this one to five, okay? And then you just go through and change all those buttons like that. Want an even better trick? You wanna see something really cool? All right, watch this, pick one of them, like zero. I'm gonna zoom in for this one. All right, instead of doing that, what you're gonna say is active control dot caption. Okay, active control dot caption. Copy that. All right, let me just show you how that works real quick. Close that. All right, open it up. Click the button. Now look at that. You get a zero in there. Why? Because the active control is this button. What are we doing? We're going to send to that function the caption of that control, which is the zero. So now I can select all of these guys and just say that. Add to calc active control dot caption. So whatever your caption happens to be, send it in there. You don't got to go one at a time through all those buttons. That's why I wanted to teach this method to you. See that? Pretty cool stuff. Watch. Save it, close it, open it, and now all of these buttons just work. Because the active control is the button you're clicking on, and we're sending that to the function that adds it to the calc value. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? That's why you learn this stuff, guys. It's really, it's, it's, it's fun. This is fun, isn't it? All right, so now that we got that, let's add our buttons for our operations, plus, subtract, uh, multiplication, and division. That's easy to do now, right? We can just copy this. Watch this. Copy this. Copy. All right. I'm going to click off of it then and paste it. Because if you, let me show you real quick. A lot of people ask this one. If you do a copy, paste, it pastes them down below. Then you got to resize the form, all that crap, right? Undo. All right. Instead, we're going to copy click off of it and then paste and then they come up here in the upper left corner then you can easily drag them and drop them right there okay now this will be addition subtraction now multiplication is a star and division is a slash like that and that's basic vba computer math all right in a future video i'll show you how to change that so it's an x and a division sign for the user to see in the calculator, and then internally we'll change it. Hold on, someone's beaming in. All right, now our code will still work, the add to, add, uh, add to calc active control caption, but we still gotta rename our buttons. There's no easy way to do that, unfortunately. Sorry, you still gotta give these guys good button names. So this will be button plus, this will be button minus, btn minus, this will be button multiply or just button mult. And this will be button divide. BTN div. Okay. And now, same thing should go on here. Let's see. Click on it, right? 9, 6 plus 32. All right. Looks good. Divided by 2. Okay. And like I said, later on, we'll switch them to, to these. Okay. But for now, we'll just, just deal. We'll just go with this. All right. That's how, that, that's how the computer wants to see it. Now, the magic is gonna happen. We're gonna make our equals button. And the equals button is gonna look at this mess of stuff we got up here and evaluate it. Take all that and do the math on it. 
And how do we do that? Well, there's a magic function built into VBA called evaluate. It's E-V-A-L, eval. That's it. That's all you got to do. And it will look at this math string. And as long as it's valid mathematical code the way that the computer wants to see it, it'll do all the math for you without any further craziness. You ready for that? All right, let's make our equals button. Right click, design view. I'm going to put the equals button. We're going to put some more stuff on top of it. So we'll just copy this guy. We'll put you right here. Equals deserves to be double high. So we'll do that. We're going to go equals. And I'm going to make all of the buttons that just do something right away because we're going to have the two different types of buttons. We're going to have buttons that just put values up top here. And then we're going to have other buttons like clear that will clear that or equals will actually do the math or these like sine, tangent, cosine will actually do the calculation as opposed to the rest of the buttons that don't immediately do something. So I'm going to make those ones red. So this guy, you're going to be red. Okay, you're ready. And this will be my button equal. E Q U. I can't spell today. All right, button equal. All right, you ready for the code? It's long. It's complicated. Oh, I. What did I just do there? Right click, build event. Ah. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm. I'm glad that this happened. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Since we have an expression in there, this is technically an expression, right? A function. All right. If you go right click build event like I just did, it takes you into the expression builder. This thing that I almost never use. I never use this thing. I completely ignore this thing. I don't like this thing. Okay. So what, what you have to do here is go to the event and just delete the expression that's in there. Okay. Then hit your dot, dot, dot button and it'll put you in there. All right. Good. That's it's good that that came up. I wasn't paying attention and I just normally ignore that. Okay. So big, long monster, ton of typing code to do here. You ready? This is crazy. Okay. You ready? So we're going to say calc equals eval calc. Done. That's it. That's literally it. All right. Calc is our text box that has our equation in it. And we're going to send that to the evaluate function. It's going to take 10 plus five, evaluate that, which should be 15, and then put that value in the box. Okay. Debug, compile, save it. Come back out here, close it, open it up. Nine plus six equals 15. It's that simple, folks. <laughs> 15 divided by 3 equals 5. 5 times 2 plus 1, or minus 1, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Did I do my, okay, minus plus, okay. Now, here's here's the problem, though, is is this might give me an error message. Watch, let's see. Oh, no, it evaluated. Okay, good. Times 6 equals, if you do something stupid in here like this, you're going to get an error. We'll deal with this. We'll do, we're going to do a whole separate lesson on error handling. But for now, just make sure what you put in here is valid. All right, five minus six plus nine times two equals, okay. If you want to add parentheses, add parentheses buttons. Let's do parentheses buttons, design view. All right, let's just, uh, we're going to throw those over on the left side. Let me take two of these guys. Let me, let me grab three of these, copy, paste. Oh, I just did the thing I told you not to do. <laughs> three of these, copy, paste. All right, we're going to put them right there. This will be left parenthesis. Actually, this will be the C button. We're going to put a clear button in there too. Left parentheses and then right parentheses. Okay. And this will be my, my clear button. Uh, not the on click event. Nope. This is going to get its own separate thing though. All right. Go to all. This will be button C. These will use that event though. This will be the button L left P. And button right P. Okay, save that. Let's make this guy red too, because that's gonna do something immediately. All right, save it, close it, open it. All right, so five, six, plus left parentheses, two divided by one, right parentheses, subtract six, equals, and I'm assuming the math is correct, I don't know. <laughs> All right. And, and the good thing about doing it this way, too, is you can just come up here and type stuff. You can just say, you know, 10 plus 5 times 3 minus 9 to the second power. We're going to cover that in a minute. Well, in the next video. Right. <laughs> and then it equals and it gets it. OK. Which reminds me, let's do a quick while we're in here. Design view. Let's do a quick um, 
tab order, auto order, because we want that calc bar to be on top. Okay. And now let's do our C button. And this is going to be real easy. Event. Right? This is going to simply be calc equals null. Just make it a null value. So whatever's in there, just basically erase it. Right? 85 minus 6. C. Gone. All right? Real easy. And for those of you who like typing at the keyboard, like I was just doing a minute ago, you could make the equals button be your default button. Right? If you go to other, there's a default button. Set that to yes. The default button on a form is the one that gets pressed when the user presses enter. As long as the user isn't in a long text field box. All right? And likewise, this can be the escape button or the cancel button. All right, what else we need? How about a decimal point? All right, copy one of these guys. Copy, paste, slide it down here. Put a decimal point in there in the caption, right? And we'll make this guy button decimal point or whatever you want to call it. Save it, close it, open it, right? 2.3 times 6 equals, perm. there you go. All right. So as you can see, it's coming along. We got a lot more features to go. Um, let me take a look at my notes here, all the stuff that I've done. Um, we're going to do error handling in the next video because if you type in something stupid, right? You're going to get an error. Well, we don't want that to happen. So we're going to we're going to fix that with a little error handling. We're going to make a back button, right? So you type in some stuff. You want to go back, back, back. And remember, the, yeah, we all have a keyboard, but what if you're running this on a tablet? You don't want to have to open up the on-screen keyboard. You just want to be able to hit back button, right? Uh, we're going to make a button to make it plus or minus, right? That's the plus or minus button. We're going to change these so it's multiplication and division symbols on there, right? So that's what you see on the thing. Okay, we're going to divide. We'll do an x squared button. Let me clear that. Let's do it like an x squared, all right? Square root of x, sine, cosine, tangent, memory stuff. And we're going to use a temp var variable so that even if you close your calculator and then reopen it again, let me reopen it again. Okay, it remembers what was in memory. See that? Oh, we got to do that. Okay. And yeah, you can make this pop up if you want to or modal or one of those things. I'll show you how to make a copy button to copy it, whatever your value is to the clipboard. All right, copy to the clipboard. Then you can come over here and paste it in or in another application or somewhere else in your database. All right, and some of the other things that some of the guys on the website suggested, uh, maybe adding percentages. Um, someone else earlier asked if we could do fractions. Fractions are kind of tough, but you can put fractions in here like uh, division. So if you want like one fifth, you could say nine plus one fifth like that. And there's your fraction. Burm, there you go. See, so fractions are basically kind of by default supported. You just got to type them in as a division. Uh, Alex suggested maybe a history where you can slide out history, everything you put in here. You know, if you want to see an audit of what was all typed in, like a like a register tape. Yeah, we could save that. We'll, we'll do that maybe. Um, Someone else wanted to see conversions, maybe like gallons to ounces, meters to inches, that kind of stuff. Sure, we could add that. Um, what features are you interested in? What do you want to see? I'll do as many of these videos as people are interested, as long as I get, you know, the views in the comments and you guys like this, you know, speak up, let me know, tell me. Um, yeah, we'll make as many of these as you guys want to see. So that's going to be it for today. That's part one of Let's Build a Calculator. Tomorrow, part two. We'll do, we'll start off with the air handling and see where it goes. Um, so that's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list.
and you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.